Hi, this is going to be the last section on the collections data type in Python. And in this section specifically, we are going to focus on a data type known as set. And so for anyone who have had college level mathematics, I believe the concept of set is not going to be alien to you. However, I am going to show you what sets are from the mathematical perspective and we also how, see how to make use of them from the programming perspective. So if you go to Wikipedia, the simplest definition of a set is, it says in mathematics, a set is a collection of distinct items. This is all we need from the definition of a set as far as the mathematical connotation is concerned. Now, in programming, we use set to store a collection of items, just as we have done with lists and dictionaries and tuples. However, there is a distinction between the set and all these other collection data types that we already know. And what you need to remember about sets is that sets are unordered and unindexed. So there is no ordering which means there is no guarantee that if we loop over the items in a set, we are going to get them in the order in which we added them. And we also cannot index them using the indices or the integer positions that we were able to use with the tuples and the list. And from the Wikipedia definition, you also saw that it has to be distinct items, which means duplicates are not allowed. So I'm working in a file called setoperations.py and we are going to create a simple set, okay? So I'm going to create a set of fruits. And to delimit a set, you use the curly bracket, similar to how we delimit dictionaries. The difference here, however, is that the items are separated by commas only, unlike in the dictionaries where we had key value pairs, okay? So let's say I have banana and I also have orange and I also have, let's say, mango here, okay? I'm going to print out the type of the variable fruit. So I want to see the type of value that is stored in the variable fruit, okay? So I'm going to print over here, I'll do type of fruit. And then let's confirm what we get. So I'm going to run Python 3 set operations.py and you can see that indeed it is of the type set. So this is how you create sets in Python. Okay, this is one way. And like every other collection that we've learned about, you remember that there is an inbuilt function called len which you can use to retrieve the length of items in the collection data type. So if you want to count how many items there are, we can say length over here. So I'm going to come here and I'll run this program once again. And you can see that indeed we have three items because there is banana, there is orange, there is mango. Now, remember I told you from the start that the items in a set are supposed to be distinct. In other words, it doesn't support duplication, okay? So let's see what happens here. If I come here and I add banana again. Sorry. So if I add banana again, let's first of all print what's inside the variable before we print the length. So you can see that I added banana twice, but we have orange, mango, and banana. And indeed, the length is three. However, when you come here, you can see that we added banana twice. There's banana at the start and there's banana at the end. So this goes to confirm the fact that if you duplicate items in a set, only one is going to stay and the rest are going to be discarded. So the last addition is going to take the place of all the previous ones. It avoids duplication entirely okay and to also confirm the fact that it is unordered you can see that in the creation of the set 
we added banana, orange, mango, and banana. However, when we printed it, you can see that we have orange, mango, and banana. So the order in which we got the set back is not the same as the order in which we created it. It could be different for every run of your program. So let's try once again. Okay, so this time around we are getting it the same way, but you can see that this time it has changed. Banana is coming, orange, and then mango. So this is one way of creating a set. And also remember that the items in your set do not necessarily have to be of the same type. We could mix up a set of strings, integers, floats, and all the other data types that we have learned about so far. So let's take a quick pause. And in the next video, I will show you how to use a constructor that is going to help you to create a set from other collection data types. So let's take a quick break and I'll see you soon.